those smiles. I thought at first as I was sitting there that we were going to have to have a healing service. <laughs> I looked out of the audience and there was not a lot of you smiling. I didn't know if there was something wrong. But I'm happy to see that that's what you're doing now. Also, I'd like to acknowledge the practitioner of the day, Gerald, and thank him for setting the tone. Yeah. And I'm going to invite you, if you just will pause with me as we turn it in once again. And think and grow spiritually. And in this moment, I would just like each of us just to unite with the I am that we are. To go to that sacred space at the center of ourselves where we identify with that which is greater than we are. But yet allows us to stand in our glory. And today we do just that, that we might be a greater illuminator of light, of love, and of joy, of peace, and of happiness. Today we come that these gifts might be expressed even more abundantly. Today as we stand in this space, in this moment, we acknowledge that we do not stand alone, but we stand with the greater I am that we are, and we allow it to be that which we are. For this understanding and the acceptance of the same, we are eternally grateful. And I allow it to be so. And so it is. And so it is. This morning I'd like to begin with the very basics of our religious science training. And that is to go to a place where we understand this and understand it so completely. That we are surrounded by a universal mind into which we Imagine that. We are surrounded by something into which we think. It is a collector of our thoughts. And in this universal mind, in its original state, Dr. Holmes says, it fills all space. And in particular, it fills the space that man uses in the universe. All the space that we use conscious or otherwise, this essence, this divine mind is filling it all. And in this place, our <coughs> thoughts are being deposited. Even as I stand here speaking to you at this moment, you're thinking of something. And those thoughts are not going unabated. They're going into a place that is very receptive to them all. And he says this, as man uses this universe, it is in him as he is in it. Now, for some of us that might sound, sound a little foreign, but you know, as the scripture said, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Into this great universal essence, into this great universal mind that we exist in and that we are thinking in, it is also existing within us. God, everywhere present, has no limit to its ability or its essence. So wherever you may be, whether it's here today or someplace else on tomorrow, you will still be a thinking being, you'll still be surrounded by pure spirit, and that same pure spirit will still be collecting all of the thoughts that you are depositing within it. Now, as we deposit those ideas into spirit, we are setting something in motion. We are setting a, as Dr. Holmes claims, a creative law. We are setting it in motion, and this creative law is doing something, and that is it is taking the very thoughts that you are thinking, and it is molding those thoughts into something. Yes. Some kind of experience, some kind of manifested demonstration. Your thoughts are not just idle things. Your thoughts are beginning to formulate experiences. And that's how, as you begin to think in this creative medium, as it begins to receive the ideas that you are placing into it, it begins to do something with it. You know, we learned about this in the very basics of our science of mind teaching. What we are talking about here really is one, the thing itself. The thing itself being this universal mind, this idea of God, that which is called by many names, but yet it is all the same. And then we go on 
to the way that it works. The way it works is as man begins to think into this universal mind, it receives these thoughts and does something with them. You know, oftentimes, you know, you'll have an experience, you say, you know, I thought about that once upon a time. Or that reminds me of something that I was thinking of. Once again, it's a validation that your thoughts are not just idle things that are just flowing in your mind. And therefore, we should always be conscious of what it is that we are thinking because we are creative beings. And because we are creative beings, that is the very foundation of our creativity. It's the, the things that we are thinking. What it does, it sets a creative law in motion. And this creative law is limitless in its ability to create possibilities. What does that mean about us? We are all possibility thinkers. Everything is possible. But if we can just begin to believe it. Dr. Holmes goes on. He says man's mind should swing from inspiration to action. Once we become inspired about anything, we should then translate that inspiration into some kind of activity. From contemplation to accomplishment. The things that we contemplate, the things that we are focusing on, we should do something with it rather than just to sit there and think of it. Let's put these thoughts into action. Let's accomplish something. You know, so often we say that there are things in life that we want to do, things that we wish to achieve, places that we would like to go, successes that we would like to experience for ourselves. And we've been given all that we need to make this happen. But we just think and do nothing. How about we move from contemplation from now on to accomplishment? And then he goes from prayer to performance. You know, prayer is an action. And there should be some expectation on our behalf when we pray. We don't pray because we have nothing else to do. We don't pray because there's no expectation of something happening to us and for us and through us as the result of our prayer. We're prayer because we are seeking something. And therefore, after we have done that, there should be some level of expectation that we have caused a movement, though unseen. It is happening for us. Things are in motion. And with that, I ask you this, and ask you just to reflect on this. What were your thoughts today? What were the things that you were thinking about and continue to think about? What things are you consciously contemplating even as I speak? You know, so often we come to church and we will affirm this right where I am, God is. Let's say that. Right where I am, God is. What kind of image comes to your mind after making that affirmation? And see, here's one of the challenges that we so often have. We will make the affirmation, but we'll make them with a blank mind, with no level of expectation. We'll just say the word because someone invited us to say it. But an affirmation is the beginning of us understanding our power. We're speaking something into existence. We are speaking and experience into existence. So when we say that right where I am, God is, maybe there should be an image in consciousness that we are surrounded once again by this universal essence that we have our being in divine mind. That God being as powerful as we understand God to be is right where we are. And right there where we are for a purpose. Another one we so often say, that I and my Father are one. Let's say that. I and my Father are one. So once again, what comes to mind when you think that I and my Father are one? Do we begin to think that we are speaking of a unity? 
place where we and God come together. An understanding within our own consciousness that there is something right where I am that is closer than my very breath. And it's there empowering me. You know, when I began today, I said that God empowers us to stand in our glory. And we stand in our glory because we are standing in the place of power. We are standing in the place of conviction. We are standing in the place of complete spiritual knowledge. That all the power that exists in the universe exists as God. And that power is existing as us. The I am that God is is the I am that we are. We are the result of God in action upon itself. And we are the continuation of that activity. As we think, God is thinking through us. But yet we are thinking into that receptive medium that we call divine mind. As we leave here today and go on our respective ways, we'll continue to be doing just that. Thinking, thinking, thinking. But let's not allow those thoughts to be idle. Someone once have said that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Now, if this is something which we're always conscious of, think about this. We are thinking spiritually. If we can accept that, that I am a spiritual being, then that's our beginning. We are beginning to think spiritually. And then we begin to realize that our thoughts truly are the genesis of our creative experiences. That this is where it all begins. Whatever you are today in your experience of life, it all began as an idea that you had. I don't care what discipline that you may find yourself a part of. It started with an idea that you had within your mind. Now, most of us continue to allow that idea to expand, and thus we have greater experiences of success. Others, it's a fleeting thing. We thought about it and said, well, maybe I'll try that. And because we put the maybe I'll try that, then maybe it might be successful. But most often it will not because we've not empowered the idea. See, to be spiritually and to think spiritually is to understand that we are empowered through our thinking. That the divine is constantly filling our mind with images and ideas and thoughts and energizing those ideas and thoughts with everything that is necessary for their complete unfoldment and manifestation. We have all of this ability, but oftentimes fail to use it. There was an interesting story that is shared by the prophet Ezekiel. And he talks of an instance in his life and he says that I was carried out in the spirit of the Lord by the hand of the Lord and I was placed in a valley and the valley was filled with bones. And he said, lo, they were so very, very dry. And he said, and then the spirit of God said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said to him, well, Lord, you know. And he said, and then the Spirit of the Lord said to me, prophesy to those bones. Speak to those bones. He said, and as I began to prophesy to the bones, all of a sudden there began a great rattling, a shaking of the bones coming together. Sinews become come upon them, skin and flesh became upon them. And all of a sudden the bones raised up. But he said, but then the bones raised up, they still had no life. He said, so the Spirit of God said to me, Son of man, Speak to the wind and cause the wind to bring breath into those bones. 
He said, so I did as I was instructed, and I spoke to the wind. And I called the winds to come and bring breath. And all of a sudden, the bones began to breathe. And what I found before me was the house of Israel, where it had completely raised up. Now imagine for a moment putting ourselves into that story and seeing these bones as all the possibilities that we always think about. And that's all they are, are just possibilities. We've thought about them, we've looked at them, and we wonder within ourselves, is it possible? Can I achieve this? Is it possible for me to reach this level of height in my experience? Is it possible for me to go to this place? Is it possible for me to enjoy the level of success that I would like to enjoy? Is it possible for me to acquire the level of finance that I would like to experience, the level of wealth? Is it possible? We ask God, is it possible? And imagine the Spirit saying, you know. <laughs> so what should I do? What happens if you speak to your vision? What would happen if you did that? And I mean literally to, to do just that. To speak to your success. <clears throat> to speak to your opportunity. To speak to the thing that you are trying to accomplish. To tell it what it is that you would like for it to do. Now, here's where we fail so often. Someone will say that and we'll go and say, Lord, would you do this for me? Yeah. Or Lord, would you do that and the other? You are in divine mind. You are empowered by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Mm. Your word is power. Why are you asking for something that you already have? So it's a reflection on how we are thinking. If we are thinking of ourselves as a spiritual being, then let's speak as one. Speak as one that understands that clearly. And realize that God has been planted within the idea. You thought about it. Now give it life. This is something you want to achieve. You've seen it. You've seen it so clearly. It's so vivid. You understand it. It's just so absolutely wonderful. Now, give it life. But see, in order for us to do that, we have to understand that we have that power. Yes. And most often, we do not. We look at all the ills of what's happening, and we focus on that. We're so quick to focus and put so much energy in all the, the, the difficulties that people are experiencing. We put so much emphasis on the craziness that the president speaks. <laughs> we, these are the images that we are seeing, and these are the things that we spend our power on. Have you not seen any great thing for yourself? Have you not seen yourself in a better place? Yes. Have you not seen a greater level of happiness for yourself? Yes. Yes. And if you are not experiencing that because you have not spoken to it, give it life. And someone may say, well, you know, if it began to happen, and it was, it was in formulation, but then all of a sudden, it just, I just sort of ran into a roadblock. Reflect back on the story once again. After the bones came together, he said, but they did not have a wife. He spoke a second time. We don't just stop. Do so often we're moving and everything is going according to the, the plan that we had sort of set for ourselves. All of a sudden we run into a roadblock. <laughs> And we run up against that roadblock, and, and it's all of a sudden the roadblock ties us up. We forgot all about the word that we spoke initially to bring ourselves to that point. We don't stop, folks. 
as one writer said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and sound mind. That means that we've been given the spirit of understanding. We've been given the spirit of know-how. We've been given the spirit of completion. We've been given the spirit of power. But it makes no difference if we fail to use it. And the failure is not within the universe. The failure resides within us. You know, so often we come and we say we claim that we believe something, but when really the, the going gets rough, we come face to face with what it is that we truly believe. And when we come stymied, that's a clue. That all that stuff about belief was just conversation. It had no real depth to it. We need to move beyond that. You know, we look so often and we can see possibilities everywhere. But we're looking with our spiritual eyes, see the possibility, because when we're looking with our physical eye, we will oftentimes become distracted. Yes. There's so many things that are going on all around us and in our environments or in our homes or in our church or wherever we are, we become distracted. And then we allow our distractions to sort of take us off kilter. All of a sudden we forgot about our focus and where it was that we were going towards and we've allowed ourselves to become consumed in the distraction. We're hearing noises. We become agitated. We can no longer focus. In that moment, once again, we speak to our experience and we say, stop. Just say that. Stop. See how we that? <laughs> Stop. In the quiet of yourself, you speak the word stop. And then speak the word calm. Let's say that. Calm. Say how you want to experience it. Calm. And you say that until your experience has completely calmed. Yes. Because it's only as we calm ourselves that we are able to focus. Let's, let's pause here for a moment. And let's have a moment of focus. Close your eyes, if you will. And with your eyes closed, I want you to just feel the calm. The calm that exists in the space that each of us have just spoken. Now, in the silence, I want you to think these words, not speak these words. I want you to think them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Then know with me that in this moment we are one. God being right where we are is loving us, is blessing us, is restoring us, is filling us with greater understanding of this divine relationship, causing every breath we breathe to be the breath of God. In Him we find life, love, and freedom. As we move, God moves as us. As we think, God thinks through us. And as we speak, God makes sounds like us. We know one. Right where I am, right where you are, God is. And where God is, I am. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so it is. And so it is. In this moment, you are in your world.
have calmed yourself. You have allowed yourself to become more spiritually aware and more spiritually in tune. Your thoughts are the genesis of your creative experiences. Your thoughts go into a creative medium that is receiving them. And as it receives every idea, it sets a creative law in the 